What's up everyone and welcome back to Pokemon Ethereal Gates. Today we are taking on the mysterious spooky mansion in Auklet Town. After last time, we went up the lighthouse and found the key to it. And now we know that the little girl is trapped in there by some sort of ghost or creepy creature. So it's up to us, the Scooby Gang. But anyway, we're going to be going to the mansion and hopefully saving this little girl from the clutches of evil, whatever evil may be. Hint, hint, it's probably a ghost. But if you guys are excited for another episode of Ethereal Gates, make sure to leave a like. I am pretty excited for it because this mansion is actually super cool. And when we get in there, uh, you'll see why if you missed the last episode. But before we get to it, we do have the fan art spotlight to check out. And today I wanted to highlight the gang, the Scooby gang that I just, I guess, named. We're going to name it the, uh, we can't name it Scooby gang. It doesn't really make sense. So actually, if you guys want to help me out for a nickname for our gang of Pokemon, which I really haven't solidified yet as you can see or well you'll see in a second after the fan art is over um i got rid of humber and ba barkush or the little pokeball crabby pokemon um not permanently just because i do want to catch some pokemon today and now i actually did want to show off as well is i finally went to the pokemon mart and bought some repels and also pokeballs and great balls um i actually realized i didn't have like any money at all in this game but Thankfully, we had a nugget and a big mushroom. I'm not sure where I got them from, but thank goodness I had those because without them, I literally had only enough money for like one great ball. But now that we sold those, we actually have some decent money. So we're going to head into the Auklet Library. Did I say mansion? Huh. I meant to say library. I'm sorry about that. We explored most of this area in the last episode. Today, we're just looking for the remaining light bulbs. We actually already got one of them. So what you basically have to do in here is put some bulbs into this chandelier. And once we've got all five of them, oh gosh, those creepy, those creepy whispers, man, they get to my head. Uh, but basically, once we've got all five of those light bulbs, we can uh, reveal the secret entrance to the basement, I guess. And I've just realized I didn't actually heal up our Pokemon, but I did get some Pokeballs because we are finally going to get our revenge chance to catch Caspook here. Caspook, the friendly ghost. I don't remember the song. It's literally all I remember about it. So, hmm. I think I'm going to save my Ultra Ball, or sorry, Great Balls, because a lot of you guys in the last episode let me know that there's going to be a special, not legendary Pokemon, but I guess a special encounter that we're going to have at the end of this um, library. So, I'm going to save the Ultra Balls for that, and hopefully we can actually catch Caspook here with a Pokeball, because... It doesn't look like I'm going to have a good time weakening it any more than it already is. So, oh man, I actually really hope we can because I don't want to. Oh my gosh, Caspook, come on. All right, I'll go for one more Pokeball. If we don't catch it with this one, then I'm done. That's it. Caspook, I don't want to catch you anymore if we don't catch you with this one. Because I swear, man, these guys have a super duper high encounter rate in this place. Like literally every other step, you'll probably run into one. Please, please. Oh my gosh, dude. I am actually just super... Ah, okay. I got a little bit too mad there. I don't know if you heard it. I just... Okay. I threw a little bit of a fit because that Pokemon is actually super annoying. But not quite as bad as um, Albaloo, I think it was called. What the heck did it just do? I tried to use one, but I guess it didn't go through. So there we go. We're just going to spray Repel and forget about Caspook. The first light bulb was right here, by the way. Uh, you just walk up to this mast here. Um, but there was this... Oh, I guess he's gone now. There was like a ghostly dad right here and we talked to him and he gave us a hint to where to find the light bulbs. So don't know what we do now that he's gone. By the way, someone also told me that these uh, whispering sounds that we keep hearing in the background, uh, apparently if you reverse the audio in this, uh, you might hear something spooky, but I don't know what it actually is. So if you want to do it yourself, um, I don't know, actually play the game for yourself. How about that? And then you can try to do it because I was going to say, you know, just reverse this, but You'll probably just hear my commentary in reverse, and that would probably be creepier than the whispering sound. I don't know, just backward speak in general sounds really creepy. Hello, how are you doing? Hide the bulbs, it takes visitors who wander too much. Find the bulb where the bravest most near to us are petrified. Wait, what? The bravest most near to us are petrified? Does he mean a Pokemon statue, or...? What does that actually mean? He gives us a riddle, but I'm not very good at riddles. Where the bravest most near to us are petrified. The bravest most near to us. That means it's Pokemon, right? So, oh, there it is. We found it. And now the ghostly guy is gone. That's what I assumed it meant. The bravest most near to us means our Pokemon. 
Um, and they're petrified because they're statues. I'm obviously, or I'm explaining something really obvious, so thank you very much to me for being Captain Obvious right now. Um, but now that we've got that second bulb, let's put that in the chandelier. And I think the ghostly guy will move to another location, perhaps down here. Nope, doesn't look like we can get down there. Unless we have to go all the way around, which would be kind of annoying, but... I don't know, we don't really have any other choice as our repels are already running out. Oh my gosh, he's not even here, dude. Come on. I don't know if the bulbs are actually in the location before you even make the guy appear. I'm gonna guess that he's probably in the top right corner this time, because we haven't... We haven't seen him there yet. We encountered him in the top left, but not up here. Oh, yeah, there he is, staring out the window. Hide the bulbs, I remember. Didn't make it out. Find the bulb where all the great stories come in too. Where they come in too? Where all great stories come in too. What does that mean? Um, well, there's some books. I, I actually don't get what that one means. Where all great stories come in too. I mean, we're in a library. There's a ton of books, dude. What does this hint mean? Um, this one? There's two books here. Oh, okay. I guess it just meant wherever we found two books. Cool. The other one also talks about the ethereal gates, which we learned a little bit about. Looks like it's it's kind of like another dimension, I guess. Uh, I wasn't exactly paying the most attention because we didn't get that much information, but we heard the first mention of ethereal gates in this uh, demo so far. Or I guess in the game in general. Hide the bulbs. I must protect others from the monster. Find the bulb on a fallen tail. The shade of blood. Alright, so this one's probably going to be on a blood-colored book, I'm going to guess. And it must be kind of close to uh, where the ghost is, but I don't really see a dark-colored book. There must be a dark-colored book somewhere around here. I don't see one down there. Oh, maybe that one? Wait, he said it's fallen, right? So maybe it's a book on the floor? No, this one is not it. Okay, I'm going to guess that it's a book that's on the floor, and it's probably like a dark red kind of color, like the color of blood, you know, which is pretty clearly not like super bright red. I don't know why on TV they always showed blood like super bright red, because I don't think blood is like super very bright. And I'm not saying this from experience or anything. I'm just saying it because my friend was saying it earlier, and I guess now it's stuck in my head. Where the heck is this book? And why isn't it stuck in my head? There it is. We found the bulb. It's the only red book in the entire library. It just happened to be all the way in the other corner. And I'm pretty sure this is our last, last repel. So thank goodness we found it in time. Ah, it was Scooby-Doo after all. I'm pretty sure I said last time that it was going to end up being behind the bookcase. Guess what? It is. So we could have just pushed that aside. Oh, help me. Um... Hello? I'm gonna go ahead and save the game because I don't want to accidentally not catch that Pokemon and miss out on that uh, unique encounter there. By the way, Sedic is actually evol about to evolve. Wait a second, we don't get experience from leveling. Can we just talk to the girl and save her? Nope, we have to save her from the Pokemon. So this is what has been causing all of the trouble all of this time. It's a wild Jinkei. What the heck is this? Oh my goodness, is this a ghost type or... I don't even know what kind of Pokemon this is, but I guess we'll go for a couple of Poison Stings and... Oh, we could have actually done that against Caspook, like switched out and used Poison Sting. Oh, God. We're gonna do no damage. Hey, we do get the Poison off, which doesn't actually help us with catching it, or with catching it, but... Um, it'll at least weaken it little by little. We'll go for a Leer as well, why the heck not, as he's gonna actually help us out here. I don't know why you did that, Jin K. Not your smartest move there so far, buddy. Um, so since he's poison, I'm just gonna start chucking Great Balls. I actually, in retrospect, probably shouldn't have gone for poisoning, but I guess we've learned that he's got Pain Split, so he's gonna try to heal up anyway. Uh, so we're gonna start chucking away, and wow, we actually caught it on the first try. Somehow, some way, Jin K, we catch on the first try, and we still don't have a Caspook. How that happens, I don't know. There are rumors that Jinke appear monthly to the small children of Laneka and kidnap the naughty ones. That's just a tall tale, though. Right? 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 Well, it's wrong, because I'm pretty sure that that means this little girl was somehow naughty, but we're not gonna ask her why, because that's kind of creepy. It's gone! And that's, that's it. We saved her! I thought that Pokemon wanted me to play, but it was mean, and it wouldn't let me go home. Please come visit me at home. Uh, I mean, if you, if you say so, little girl, I'm not, I, I didn't mention it, she did. Anyway, uh, now that that happened, or now that that's done with, and we are out of repels completely, what the, are you serious? 
When I actually want to run into one, we somehow don't run into a Caspook. Why does that happen to me? Please explain someone. Why is it that... I, I, don't, I don't know, man. I just feel like I have the worst luck when it comes to pretty much anything. But specifically in Pokemon, I have some pretty terrible luck. And it looks like this thing might be Ghost and... Well, obviously Ghost and something else because... Poison Sting is not very effective. Um, maybe it's Ghost and Poison then. Hmm. I don't really know, but I guess we'll go try and keep using some more Poison Stings. It's probably going to take us out next turn anyway, but we can swatch, or not swatch out, switch out and go for a Gust, which will hopefully not take it out. Come on, man. I really just want to... Okay, you know what? We should switch out now then because... Oh, there we go. Now we got the Poisoning, so never mind. It's probably not a Poison type because I don't think Poison types can get Poison. Just go for your Nightshade, dude. Oh my goodness, come on. It's gonna die from poisoning, and I'm still not gonna get to catch Caspook, I'm, aren't I? Aren't I, aren't I? Um, I'm trying to guess what type this thing is, but I'm really bad with typings. I mean, I know the, the really like obvious ones, but I guess not, because I think last episode I said that Rock was good against Grass Pokemon, when pretty obviously it's the other way around. Grass is good on Rock, so it doesn't really make sense for it to be the other way. It's just a ghost type. Why wasn't- what the heck? Why was Poison Sting neutral against the other thing then? Against, uh, what What was that Pokemon called? J- Jaykin? What? P J something? Jinkei! Jinkei! Why was it not- what the- okay, never mind, dude. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention, but I'm pretty sure our Poison Sting was neutral against Jinkei, and for some reason, it was not very effective against Caspook. The point is, we've got Caspook. They're both dead, even though they were already dead Pokemon. They're both ghosts. How do you kill a ghost, apparently, with poison? We've learned a lot of new things today, but we did it. We saved the little girl, and now we're gonna go back to her house. Um, by the way, these two dudes have finally moved out of the way. It's so nice to know that the little girl is finally back with her family. That is, that is really great. We can move on to Route 4 finally, but, uh, we'll go talk to her just because I feel like her daddy might have a reward for us. Let's find out. Oh, there's her doll too. Hmm. I'm gonna guess this is based on some kind of Pokemon that hasn't been revealed yet for the game. Just predicting that because uh, it would make a little bit of sense, I guess. Thank you so much for, as a token of gratitude, take this HMO1 for cut, yeah! Don't know if there's gonna be any cut trees coming up ahead, but now if there are, we can uh, use those. By the way, this thing, it's called an apostrophe. Don't know how I didn't remember that because I actually, I feel like I used to be pretty good at grammar stuff, but now I just don't remember, but... I don't know, it was called an apostrophe, so apostrophes are replaced by boxes in this game, or I guess maybe because I didn't install the fonts properly. Uh, there's an item right here, which is a TM for Roar, I didn't notice it last time. Um, there's also an item that I skipped over in the lighthouse, but that item is actually glitched, so we can't really get it. Um, I am also realized, did we heal our Pokemon? Yeah, we did, because they were two of them were dead, so kind of makes sense. Um, so there's one thing that I wanted to point out right now, I guess. Um, so Moston here... Mostyn, I guess. I'm gonna call it Mostyn because someone put a pretty cool theory um, that it's based on the city of Boston, and that'll make a lot more sense when we evolve this guy. But anyway, it evolves by leveling up in the Avocet Forest. It doesn't matter what level, so I think we should head back to that forest and actually try to train up Mostyn and see, or Mostyn, ah, whatever, I'm not gonna remember. I'm just gonna go for Mostyn and try to level it up there. Um, so what I'm gonna do... First of all, Sedic is also really close to evolving, so we're going to head on to the next route and try to train up, but try to make sure that it, uh, off of these trainers that we're going to get here, we don't actually get a full level up on Mustin. Arklet Town to Avocet City, and oh my gosh, this theme is awesome. I'm just going to take a little break and listen to it, because that's probably a trainer, and I'm actually really digging this theme right now, so I'm going to sit here for just a second and check out the Pokedex, because why not? I mean, we already checked out the Pokedex, but I still don't know where to find Fuegroff. I really want Fuegroff, but we haven't found one yet. This is the one Pokemon that I wanted to catch ever since I saw him revealed before the game came out. Here's Jinkei, by the way. Uh, we can't really guess if it evolves or anything, though, because, you know, there's not, like, another Pokemon here. If there was one more here and then an empty space, you'd probably guess that Jinkei evolves, but... Uh, apparently, Jinkei is a one-time encounter, so if you fail to catch him there where we just fought him... Uh, you don't really get another chance to do so. And the last Pokemon in the Pokedex is Fruibat still. Alright, I think that's good enough. We've heard this music. It is great. Now let's battle. I can see into the future and you will lose. Are you Hero Nakamura? I don't think so because you're a girl. Hey, she's actually got a pretty cool sprite. I just say that because for some reason, like, the little 
the little tuber sprites, which were like the last trainers that we battled, look really weird to me, but maybe that's just me. Uh, the point is, she's got an ear, and he's blind, so he can't even see the trainer, so it's not like it matters to ear here uh, whether his trainer is beautiful, has a beautiful sprite or not, because she can't really see it, or he, I guess it's a boy. Um, but Sedic still can't handle his own battles, it really sucks that it has to be this way, because Sedic is about to evolve, but it looks like he's not going to be able to do it on his own. He's going to have to use the help of Avinch and friends, the Scooby Gang. We're going to call it the Jinkei Gang for today. Um, so if you guys leave suggestions for what we should call our team of Pokemon, that would be awesome. But I guess for now, I'll call it the Jinkei Squad because that's the latest Pokemon we caught. And this whole episode revolved around him. So I don't know. It doesn't really make much sense. I'm just making something up. I think if we go, oh my gosh, he has quick attack of his own. Are you serious, dude? And he's level 17. That really sucks. Okay, so, hmm. I think Mostan should be able to handle whatever attack he goes for. So, Mostan might actually be able to gain a ton of experience from this. Probably more than enough to get a level up, actually, now that I think about it. But he should be able to tank out. Yep, you're a normal type, so. Come on, Mostan. Put your head back in the game, dude. And by that, I mean put your head back on top of yourself. Because we are in a serious battle right now, bro. You can't just be... Lying around, throwing your head, letting it roll about. That's not the way that this works, Mostan. You gotta, you gotta battle a little bit, bro. Oh my gosh, there he goes again. He is just, ah, heads off, man. Keep your head in the game. I don't, I can't make any more head puns. We gotta stay ahead of the competition. There we go, that's, that's another one. All right, so Sedic, how much did you get for that? To next level 53, and this guy needs 42, so yeah, we'll just go to the forest later on and try to train him up there. Um, what is, what do you have, Jinkei? Oh, he's Ghost and Fairy, that's why! Why didn't it show that in the Pokedex? What the heck? It's a Ghost and Fairy. I bet now people think that I'm dumb because I didn't realize that it was Ghost Fairy, but now it makes perfect sense. It's got Prankster also, which is pretty good. It doesn't really have the best attacks though, um, but what do you have, Caspook? Caspook is also pretty cool. Um, ooh, Nightshade, okay. I think I might train up Caspook, even though uh, I like dual type Pokemon more, but I don't know, Caspook just seems cool, like a little bit it seems more likely that it would evolve, and I'm actually not sure on those, even though I have the sprites and I can tell what Pokemon evolve into what. Oh my gosh. What is this? What the heck is an Udode? Or Autode? Udode? I'm gonna go for Udode, because that's kind of what it sounds like it would be called. Oh my gosh, there we go. It's really hard to use the menus without having to click with your actual mouse, because I guess it's a little bit bugged out right now. Um, so at least for switching out Pokemon, it's a little bit annoying sometimes. Anyway, I'm guessing this thing is probably a bug and ground type. It's probably a bug type at least. So I'm gonna go rock smash and oh, never mind. It seems like it might be a rock type. What type are you? It looks to me like it would be a bug and ground, but I guess it's a rock type of some sort. You know what? How about we just catch it and find out? Even though the Pokedex might just uh, tell us one of its typings, kind of like it did for Jin K. I don't really care. I just want to know what you are. Uda ud uda uda. Udo, 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 there we go. It's a rock type. They result from several proteins using a hollow geode. Okay, that's pretty sciencey there. Uh, we'll just pretend that it's just a little rock uh, worm thing. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Is it like a mole? Like a, like a naked mole rat that works out of rocks? I mean, it looks like it was just made up from minerals. So maybe it is literally just a rock with awesome teeth. Look at it. Look at that dude, he is having the time of his life right now, just chilling like a villain with his grin, whatever that means. Uh, I'm checking all these flowers because I feel like there's hidden items somewhere around here and we haven't found nearly enough hidden items yet. I know all there is to know about Pokemon battles, oh yeah? Do you know what this rock behind you is? Because it certainly doesn't look like it's a regular old rock, it looks very inconspicuous there, so... I'm gonna guess that that rock has something special. Wait, inconspicuous means that you can't tell that it's special. So it is very conspicuous, very, very much conspicuous that rock is. Um, hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and go for in Jin K. I, I keep wanting to say N K because I guess the names are pretty similar. They're spelled different, but you just add a J to the beginning and whoa. Wow, this is actually a really cool Pokemon. I didn't know the back sprite was animated, but it makes it look really, really creepy, kind of ghosty when it's like, moving around like that from side to side. It's really cool, actually. Uh, the only problem is that fire types actually resist fairy attacks and Jinkei doesn't have any ghost moves. So 
We might be here for a while, but I'm pretty sure we can actually take this thing down. Because even if it does get us down a little bit, it's howling a lot actually. Even if it does go for a super, super duper attack, we can always pain split it up and then we'll be good to go. Actually, I don't think pain split would be good in this case, just because, yeah, we're still higher HP than he is. Maybe a disarming voice though, doesn't that? Or no, dreaming kiss. Draining kiss, not dreaming. What is dreaming? Don't even think that's a word. Draining kiss because it'll heal us up a little bit. It's a little bit like a fairy absorb as far as I know. Wow, it actually does more damage than this arming voice too. Didn't even know about that. Anyway, Sedic finally grows to level 13, which means that he is going to be evolving after this battle. Finally, finally, it's been so long. I think two episodes now I've been saying, oh, Sedic is totally gonna evolve in this episode, but nope, the time is now, ladies and gentlemen. And the time is also now for this Pokemon to show up, whatever it might be. What is that, actually? Oh my gosh. Okay. It looks like a... What? A porcupine? Is that the kind of animal? I mean, I'm saying it's weird because it's cut off a little bit. I guess because it's not animated. So all the animated sprites are a little bugged out right now and that they're not actually animated. So, I don't know. We can deal with it, though. I can... I tough through through worse things before. We can certainly power through a little bit of a bugged out sprite. It's unfortunate for Dimeless though. Like first he lost his dimes and now he's his the entire bottom half of his body is gone. Like man, feels bad man. If there was any moment where we could really truly say feels bad man, this would be the one. Look at this dude. No dimes and no butt. Like what do you do as a porcupine? Oh, we have levitate. Well, I guess this thing is a ground type considering it just tried to go for that, but we'll just take it out with a nightshade and Caspook somehow takes out a Pokemon even though we literally just got him. The thing that Sedic couldn't do for like a billion levels, Caspook does in his first battle. Come on, man. This is truly turning into a feels bad man moment just because, I don't know, maybe Caspook because it has a nightshade. It actually does this. I think it does damage depending on your level, so right now we're doing 10 damage no matter what. Which means that we might be here for a while. This dude just wants to put up his speed. He's trying to be a quick little rock mole thing. I don't know what you are. <laughs> I just seriously, I can't tell. It just looks like it's got the biggest smile on earth and I love it. I just love Pokemon that are happy, you know. I just want everyone to be happy. That's the only thing that I ask. So the fact that Udo is super duper happy despite just being taken down by my little ghost here. Oh, I've just realized. I don't think he can hit us because he only has a ground type move or something because he's not going for any attacks. He's going for hardens and he's going for uh, rock polish. So either he doesn't have an attack that can hit us or the AI is just being weird right now. Uh, but either way, we took it out and we're learning Astonish, which I'm actually going to go ahead and grab for Spite because even though Spite is good when the enemy Pokemon has it because it depletes your PP, it's kind of annoying. It's not that good, I feel like, to use against the enemy's Pokemon. Like, stalling out a PP is just not really something you need to do in the in these, in the games, in the regular games. In competitive battling, sure, but not here. Anyway, important things are happening on screen right now as Sedic is finally evolving into Magana. So no longer do we have Sedic Kaiba. Now we just have Magana. Way, we finally learned some attacks. Jeez Louise, how many attacks are you going to learn right now? Harden, Acid, and Poison Gas. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of Leer then for... Why did I just get Harden? That is not a good attack. What the heck? All right, whatever. We finally got him. Uh, except now, Magana is still not really the best Pokemon. It's still gonna be pretty hard to train up. Uh, but having that Poison Gas and whatnot makes it a little bit easier to train up than beforehand when we just had Poison Sting. <gasps> there it is! Oh my gosh, we finally found it, and Magana gets the chance to battle it. It's probably gonna instantly die because I'm a bug and it's a fire type, but let's go, poison gas. Wait, does acid automatically, oh, we're totally dead. Okay, Magana. There's your first battle, dude. That is a really weird looking Pokemon. It's just a giant cocoon, man. Not a cocoon man, but like, you know, like it's, it's a cocoon man, like comma man. Not a cocoon man, that would be really weird, but somehow I can see that happening in a movie of some sort. All right, we're gonna go Nightshade, and hopefully it doesn't have very much HP so that we can do two Nightshades. Ooh, we might even be able to do three of them. Yeah, I think it has more than 30. It's level 11, Caspook right now has 29. Oh no, I don't think so actually. Cause if it has 29, then it's dead with another Nightshade. Whatever, we'll just go for a Great Ball. I'm pretty sure this should catch it. Finally, 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 we're gonna have what I deem the what I deem the fabby of this game. It's Fuegra. 
though we didn't actually catch it. So I'm celebrating our victory a little bit too early. Come on, one more great ball. I really hope that this does it because I've actually really wanted this Pokemon since before this game even came out. So I don't know, dude. Jeez, come on. Ah, oh, we could have gone Astonish actually. It would have been way smarter if I went Astonish and then tried to catch it because we would have gotten it down to red HP. Wow, we made it flinch too. All right, well, I guess this isn't too bad. We still have two Pokeballs, so I just gotta really hope for the heart of the cards here, the heart of the balls. You've heard of the heart of the cards, but have you heard of the heart of the balls? I'm gonna coin that right now, coining that term. No one else can take that now. Someone probably already did that before. Anyway, there it is. Three shakes, curse is broken. We got Fuegra. It is extremely wary of all that crosses its path. However, beneath all the growling and barking is a warm, fiery, and loyal heart. Ah, what a cute little Pokemon. It's Fuegra. And now we're gonna grab this item and head back to the Pokemon Center. Why, why did, we didn't get burned though. One Pokeball, it all comes down to this. My arch nemesis, Al Baloo, is finally gonna be caught. <laughs> We finally caught you, Albaloo. You can't escape me this time. I'm not even gonna read your Pokedex description. That's how much I hate you. I don't actually hate it. It's pretty cool. And we're back to the Avocet Forest. It's been a very long time since we've been here, but we're here for one reason and one reason only, and that is to evolve our Mustin into whatever it is that he might evolve into. I actually don't really want to spoil it, but he's pretty much at the experience that he needs. We just gotta tackle a couple of Verdvas down, and by a couple I mean like literally, because I don't think one of them alone will do it. I think these guys give like 20 experience, so I think two or three. The time is now. What will Mustang evolve into? Find out in the next episode of Ethereal Gates.